Can AI replace animators? That is the question that a lot of people have been asking and talking about for like, I don't know, the past like year, two years kind of. You know, I thought, you know, why don't I chip in? I am an animator after all, so I can uh, put in my perspective. And I would say, yes, yes, AI can, can replace animators. And it's pretty fucking sad because it, it's pretty sad. It can't do it yet. AI technology is not good enough yet that it can do it, but I mean, you know, who's to say that in one year, five years, 10 years, it, it won't be able to, you know, cause it's always getting better. And uh, it's, it's pretty sad because, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they make their, their income through this. They, uh, they pay their rent through this. They pay their mortgages through this. They pay for groceries with this. And, um, you know, people go to school for this and it, it's, it's pretty sad. In the future, like, let's say if this AI technology does become widely adopted and they use it to make animated movies and stuff, they're definitely gonna need assets in order to keep the characters consistent. Like, I don't think it's just gonna be like, oh, they type in Elsa runs upstairs or something because the stairs will gonna are they're gonna look different in every single shot if they do that and Elsa's gonna look different in every shot so they're gonna need to make assets but maybe they can use AI to make the assets and then combine the assets with this sort of AI animation generation software you know people always say like I hear this uh, argument for why AI cannot replace animators and they or do like artists and they say oh well you know, there's always the human expression, the human expression and the human creativity can't be replaced by a, by an AI. I, I'd say that if it's like the person writing the story or someone making the creative decisions, that is true. But um, a lot of the time, honestly, when you're working in a studio on a professional project and you're just like one artist among like dozens or hundreds of artists, often they they really don't want you to be creative. They just want you to follow the storyboards. They just want you to follow the instructions and they just want you to be like very, very exact with like their instructions. There was like a lot of uh, shows that I worked on where uh, I would even just, I would try to add in like one pose or I would just try to add in like one little change. And um, the directors and the clients, they would just tell me to change it, just match the storyboards. And they would just want me to be a vessel to transform storyboards into animation so i was fine with that you know because I, I i pay i was able to pay the bills with that but um honestly uh you know with this level of you know kind of ai stuff like you know when ai becomes good enough that it can do the do this and it can turn storyboards into animation um you know they're they're not gonna have a need for us honestly and when they can turn prompts into storyboards and then turn those storyboards into the animation, then then we're turbo fucked. And then, you know, there's not really going to be much for us. And I know, you know, people are going to say, oh, the human expression, the human expression. But I mean, think of it this way. Like, if the grass texture in a movie is AI generated, do you think the audience is going to even know or even care? Like, probably not, honestly. And um, it's really sad. Or even like little nitty gritty stuff like the 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 shadows or something like if the shadows in a movie are painted by ai or if the shadows are painted by a human in an animated movie are the viewers going to notice or are they even going to care like they probably won't you know and i think this could create some really cool opportunities for indie animation because then we can uh, create indie projects like my show manware uh, by the way, check it out. It's very cool. It's a very little indie uh, animated series that I've been making for the past couple years. First episode's out and the second episode's coming out soon. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Because, like, I can make a separate video about this, but, like, making indie projects is just really hard. And uh, a lot of people say that indie animation's really blowing up on YouTube. And, it, I, it, like, you can clearly see the numbers are really good for other people, but they're not very good for me. And that's kind of sad. Honestly... I, uh, I wouldn't be too, like, upset about AI art if they just did it, like, ethically and they got consent before they put the, uh, used people's art to feed their algorithms, but the fact that they stole the art and then used it to feed their algorithms, uh, and to feed their generative AIs is just pretty, pretty sad, not gonna lie, it's pretty yuck. They stole our work and then just used it to feed their, to feed their AIs, you know? Yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about with, uh, with AI and replacing people, because, uh, 
you know, there's those two stories of uh, that happened historically where people say, oh, when there were machines invented that uh, uh, revolutionized uh, making clothes, they invented these new sewing machines, and then people who sewed clothes by hand were really pissed off, and they destroyed the sewing machines. Um, I learned about this back in high school history, and, uh, you know, they were all pissed off, and they are destroying them. You know, nowadays, all clothes are pretty much made by machines, and, uh, you know, we have a lot more clothes now, and things are pretty nice, and people aren't really upset that clothes are made by machines. And there's this other, this other thing that happened in history where, uh, when photography was invented, uh, there were painters, there were painters, and uh, the painters, they said, oh, painting is dead now. You guys, you guys ruined the painting. Now painting is dead because of photography. And uh, painting didn't die because photography was invented because of, uh, you know, people still want the human expression and people don't necessarily buy paintings or look at paintings just to see a copy of reality, but they see, they look at paintings because they want to see that artist's uh, expression, you know? Or they want to see something abstract that can't be created by a camera. Um, yeah, so it could kind of go either way, where it could be like the clothing example, where uh, this new technology gets invented and then it, uh, you know, destroys the jobs. Um, or it could go the other way, where it's like painting, where like people still do it and it doesn't destroy the jobs, you know? Oh, uh, one thing I just want to throw in is that I think it's kind of bullcrap when people say, oh, it's just, it's just technology. Technology's gonna happen whether you like it or not. You just gotta accept that technology's here. Cause like, okay, just cause there's technology doesn't mean that it's good, you know? Like chemical weapons got invented and uh, nuclear bombs got invented, you know? And uh, there's technology that's been invented, uh, you know, but that doesn't make it good. Honestly, just thinking about it and just being an experienced animator, um, I really, like, I can really see this technology going more the route of the, of the sewing machines and, uh, just kind of taking all our jobs and stuff and just kind of ruining our, uh, lives. And, you know, you already see it happening with graphic design and, uh, illustration, you know, and commissions and, uh, you know, Honestly, it's probably only a matter of time before they come for animation next, and it's it's pretty sad. But hey, you know, no one can predict the future with absolute certainty. So, I mean, anything could happen. And if anyone tells you that they can predict the future with absolute certainty, then they're fucking lying and they're wrong. Because a lot of people have tried to predict the future throughout history, and, you know, they've been wrong. Um, unless you make a really, really safe prediction, like, the sun will set or something. You know, but even then, I mean, the sun could get blown up by an alien named Zargulk, and then eight minutes later, there's no more sun. So, like, you know, anything could happen. One thing that I've thought about on this topic of, like, AI taking people's jobs is that, um, even if, let's say, we live in a world where no one is paid to animate anymore, the traditional way, even if, let's say, all the jobs are now being done by AI prompters and stuff, and, you know, the executives, they just type in you know, what they want, and then they don't hire artists to, to make the art anymore. You know, there's nothing stopping you from still animating. You could still animate in your house and still animate by yourself if you like to animate, you know? Like, you know, you just wouldn't get any money. Same thing with painting. Like, if no one wants to buy paintings or, or buy art commissions because of AI, you can still paint, you know? No one can take away your brushes, no one can take away your, your hands and your pens and stuff. You, like, you can still make art yourself. It's just, uh, it's just no one might want to buy it from you, you know? On the topic of AI art replacing artists, I think it might make art, like, a lot crappier in the future just because, like, these, uh, if you have unskilled people who are using these tools, uh, making the, uh, art, then they might not have the right eye for it. And, uh, there might be, like, mistakes that they don't notice. Like, they don't know what a tangent is, or they don't know how to make a good silhouette or a good pose or something. And so they're just gonna be using this AI to, uh, create this art, but it's just, like, it's just got, like, a bunch of mistakes and stuff that you need, like, an artist in order to, like, see. I want to close this video out with this poem by Shel Silverstein that, um, I first heard as a kid, but, uh, I didn't really fully understand it back then, and I feel like it's it's really applicable to this situation. The poem's called My Guitar, and it goes like this. Oh, wouldn't it be a most wondrous thing to have a guitar that could play and could sing by itself? What an absolute joy it would be to have a guitar 
that didn't need me.